Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. It is March 16th, and here we are in our virtual school. Um, I am going to try and keep things as similar to regular class as I can. So we are going to start today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we pray together. Teach me, God, to add love and mercy towards others, to subtract sin and anxiety from our life, to multiply the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and to divide our differences as I share with others acts of mercy today. Let's all stop and close our eyes and think of something that we would like to pray for. And we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so, we are just going to uh, move on. We did multiplicate, multiplying radical expressions last time. Um, so today we are doing dividing radical expressions, and that is 9-3, just like it was before. So we're doing 9-3 again. That's okay, but this time, right, dividing radical expressions. So, of course, this is nice because if you have not um, gotten this as quickly as we go and written it in your um, table of contents and on your page, then pause this write it down and then start it again. So once you are done, here we go. So there's one main thing that we need to know when we do this. And I'm going to use um, letters to, um, they're not supposed to be variables. It's just a way to show you this. So um, the square root of A divided by the square root of the P, B, sorry, is the same as the square root of a divided by b. So if we are doing, if we have two separate ones, I can actually put them together. Conversely, um, if I start off with something like this, the square root of a divided by b, I can change that to the square root of a divided by the square root of b. This seems weird, but once we get started, you're going to see um, the two different times that I want to go back and forth with this. Okay, make sure you have that down. Um, if not, pause or go back and write it down. And here we go. So we're going to do some examples. The first one that I'm going to do is 28 MN over 8 So I have to think about what I want to do um, for simplifying and dividing these radicals. I'm always, always thinking about how that if I simplify it, I am looking for the what inside a perfect square. That's correct. So I, I, I know that eight isn't a perfect square, um, but I don't necessarily want to break that up first. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, what is 28 divided by 8? I'm going to simplify it by saying, well, that is 4. 28. 8 goes into 28 four times. What about my n's? Those cancel out. Would you guys agree with that? So I am left with 4m on the top. And I can put over 1 but I don't really need to, okay? Since I have divided 8n into 28, 8, 28mn, I get 4m. Now I have a perfect square. What is the square root of 4? That would be 2. Does, and I'm going to go ahead and cross that out, what about m? No perfect square there, so it remains in. So my answer is 2 times the square root of m. That is one way that I can do this. Let's say I had 12 times the square root of 18 divided by 3 times the square root of 2. Now, I'm going to look at this to start, and I'm going to say, hmm, 
right now, that is obviously not uh, a perfect square. 18 isn't a perfect square, but what if I put these together? Remember, it, I said that if I have them separate, I can also put them together. So I'm going to do this. 12 over 3 times a big square root of 18 divided by 2. All right. What is, let's start on the outside, what's 12 divided by 3? That would give me 4. And inside my square root, 18 divided by 2 gives me, that's correct, 9. Ding, ding, ding. It is a perfect square. What is the square root of 9? 3. So 4 times 3, I bring it on the outside. Is there anything left in here? No. 4 times 3 equals 12. That is my answer. So I am always looking for... <coughs> Can I divide this out? <clears throat> can I divide this out? Can I put it in one or can I break it up? Now we're going to see where this is important in just a few minutes. Um, let's do two more of those just to make sure that we're all on the right page and that we understand these. So let's do... Um, Do, 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 do. Square root of, I'm going to make one up here. All right, let's see. Um, square root of 10b squared divided by the square root of 5. All right. Um, I'm looking and I see 10, uh, 10 divided by 5. And that can work. So I'm going to change this into a big square root of 10b squared over 5. So I've gone from one square root, or two square roots to one. How can I simplify this? Well, I know that 10 divided 5 goes into 10 twice. So this would give me 2b squared. Does everybody agree with that? Okay. Can I take the square root of 2? No. What about b squared? Yes, square root of b squared is b on the outside, leaving me with the square root of 2 on the inside. All right. Um, let's do... I think we're going to stop there for a second. Um, so now I need to talk about, and I need you to write this part big in your notes, um, what is the thing I have to remember with when I'm dividing with radicals. I can never, I can never have a radical on the bottom, which is dividing when I have simplified. So once I've simplified, you've seen that I end up with square roots on the top. So 3 um, times the square root of 2. That's fine. What I can't end up with, we'll put a star there, I can't end up with 3 divided by the square root of 2. Okay, that doesn't work. So I'm going to show you the method that we use to get rid of square roots or radicals on the bottom. Um, so let's say I had 3 divided by the square root of 2. What could I always multiply? Thinking about how I multiplied, remember, I can when I multiply two square roots, they both go underneath. I'm always trying to find a square. Well, the easiest thing to do is to multiply this by itself. So if I were to multiply that by the square root of 2, so first of all, let's think about this. I'm doing it top and bottom. What is square root of 2 divided by square root of 2? Same thing as 4 divided by 4. That equals 1. What about a divided by a? 1. What about 1,000 
b squared divided by 1,000 b squared? 1. Square root of 2 divided by square root of 2? 1. Okay, so I am multiplying this by 1. If I'm multiplying it by 1, am I changing the number? No. 5 times 1? 5. It's all the same. So I'm going to choose what's on the bottom here. There's no way to simplify this, as you can see. I can't divide it by 3 because that's not under a radical. So I can't do that. So I'm going to multiply it by itself. So now on the top, I'm going to get 3 times the square root of 2. And here, I'm going to get 2 times 2, which is 4, right? All right, so this is going to become 3 times the square root of 2 over 4. I can leave it like that, or I can say 3 fourths times the square root of 2. That and this are the same, okay? These are just two different ways to write the same thing. Now I'm good. I have not ended up with a radical on the bottom. We're going to try a couple more of those. This is a little bit confusing. Um, make sure that you have this written in your notes. If not, pause. I'm going to erase this. Let's do a couple more. Um, 15n divided by 2 times the square root of 3. All right, let's take a look at this. Is there another radical on the top that I can divide this one by? No. Um, let's see if I can simplify this. 15 divided by 2. Can I do that? No. So I'm going to look here. What do I need to get rid of this radical on the bottom? I just need to multiply it by what? The square root of 3. And so when I do that, I have to do same to top and bottom. Now I've basically multiplied this by 1. All right. So I get on the top 15n on the outside times the square root of 3, because there's no radical there, over 2 times the square root of 3 times 3, which is 9. All right, so I've got 15n times the square root of 3 over, what's the square root of 9? That's correct, 3. So 3 times 2 would give me 6. All right, 15n. Um, now I'm writing this out every little step so you guys can see it. But if you know that, Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, and that will just give me whatever's in here. That will give me, um, when I take it out, that 3. Um, you're good with that. All right, can I reduce this? I've got 15 and 6. I sure can. What goes into both 15 and 6? That's right, 3. So if I divide this by 3, I get 2. If I divide this by 3, I get 5. So I've got 5n over 2 times the square root of 3. Um, I wrote it like that. You could have written 5n times the square root of 3 over 2. Those are exactly the same. All right. Hopefully, we're starting to get it a little bit more. Um, I'm going to erase this one. Please make sure that you have all of these down in your notebook, okay? If you didn't write it down, I want you to pause this, go back and write it in. Really, I want you to write them all down, okay? Um, so, let's try um, three times the square root of 120 over the square root of six. Let's see what we can do with this. <clears throat> Is this a perfect square? No, it's not. But before I try and multiply this out, and I'll still get the same answer, but it would sure be easier. Does 6 go into 120? It does. So let's try that. So I'm going to change this into 3 times 100, square root of 120 over 6. 6 goes into 12 twice, um, so that would be 20. So I get 3 times the square root of 20. Now I'm asking myself, remember, every time I'm thinking aloud to myself, talking to myself, what can, can I find a perfect square in this? I'm just basically 
I'm simplifying all of these. Some of them involve addition and subtraction like we started with, some like multiplication like what we did last week, some division like this week. But in the end, what I'm doing is simplifying this over and over again. All right, so this would be the same as 3 times the square root of 4 times 5. I chose five, uh, 4 because it's the perfect square that goes into 20. Square root of 4 is... Correct, 2, so I'm doing 3 times 2 on the outside. I'm left with 5 on the inside. My answer, 6 times the square root of 5. All right, I'm hoping this is coming along. I know this is um, a little bit difficult. All right, I'm just going to draw a line here. Now let's try um, another one. Um, let's try... Um, 5b divided by the square root of 27. So I'm asking myself, is 27 a perfect square? Mm, no, I think there might be a perfect square in there, but right now it's not a perfect square. Is there another square root up here that I can combine like this? So that was nice. I had another square root and I could combine them all together. Is there another square root here? No, I can't combine a regular thing, which is on the outside. This, uh, uh, this is a whole number already. Um, I can't combine that with this. So what am I going to have to do? Multiply by what? Square root of 27 over the tw uh, square root of 27. So I've got that. That equals 1. 1 times that is the same thing. Now, what do I get here? So on the top, I'm going to have 5b times the square root of 27. 27, square root of 27 times the square root of 27. You guys, don't do it. It's 27 squared. What's, when I take the square root of a square, I'm taking that number times itself, right? So it's just 27. Does everybody understand that? 27 times 27 is 27 squared. That would be just like saying b squared. What would that be? b. So if it's 27 squared, when I multiply those two, I'm, I'm going to take the square root of 27 squared, and it's 27. Okay. Um, all right. So now I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking um, probably I can... Uh, do nothing there. So I'm going to move to this. <clears throat> so I've got 5b over 27. What about this? Is there a square, a perfect square that's in 27? So I'm going through them. 4, no, 9, yes. All right, so I've got square root of 9 times 3 is 27, right? What's the square root of 9? 3. So I'm moving that to the outside. So now I've got 15b over 27 times the square root of 3. Now can I reduce this? I sure can. 3 goes into both. 3 goes into here 5 times. 3 goes into here 9. So I've got 5b times the square root of 3 over 9. There's a lot of simplifying. Lots of steps. Okay. Um, I, so... Um, I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to write some steps down. If you feel like that would help, you can write that down. If you feel like you are ready to go, then I'll have you do that in a second. All right, so steps. So, number one, when I'm dividing, um, can I combine the top square root with the bottom square root to make one long square root. Okay, that would be the first one. And then, then divide. All right, number two. Um, if the bottom can't be simplified, can't be divided, we'll say, with the top, then... <clears throat> And this should be the bottom radical. If the bottom radical can't be divided, then multiply both top and bottom 
by the same radical. Okay, simplify. And we'll move that to the step three. Okay, when I say simplify, that means um, simplify um, the radical, so the square root, take out what I can. Uh, it means simplify um, the numbers on the outside. of the square root. So I am looking at lots of simplifying here. Can I combine the top square root and the bottom square root so that like this, um, so I've taken this and this and made it into this, then divide. Uh, if the bottom radical can't be divided, then multiply both top and bottom by the same radical. Um, simplify the square root. Simplify what's inside, find the perfect square, uh, and then simplify, so let's write here, find perfect square. GCF to factor out, and then simplify the numbers on the outside as well. All right. Um, so we are, I'm, this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to give you a few problems. Um, and then I am going to give you a time limit. So you're going to work. Remember what we talked about last Thursday. You're going to work hard and you're going to concentrate on those. You guys, this all builds on each other. Okay. So what we did on, what we did with simplifying radicals, we're still using it. Um, Tomorrow we're going to be using adding and subtracting radicals when we divide, okay? Um, multiplying radicals, we're going to use it again today when we're multiplying both top and bottom. Um, dividing radicals, we're going to use this as we move forward, so it's super important that you remember it and that you understand it, okay? You can ask me questions on the, um, on the comments um, on our Google, Google Classroom. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, it'll be weird tomorrow because our hours are 9 to 12, and then I'm going to be at school from 12 to 2, so you can always ask me at school if you see this early. Um, otherwise, um, you know, I will, on a normal day, I'll be answering questions from like 9 to noon. Um, once you're done with that, I'll always give you like maybe, in this case, probably two problems. Um, and you're going to do those answers. Um, you'll either write it in short answer or you'll write it in, well, you can't write it in short answer because you can't type those kind of things in. So we will, um, I'll, I'll do multiple choice for this kind of thing. Um, it's been an adventure for me because I've had to do, go to code cogs and that helps me write in Google Classroom using like radicals and that type of thing. Apparently can't do that. I never knew that, but learn that. Um, so um, I will have you do a, a multiple choice and then that will be the grade that I take. But this is going to be, these are your notes. The next thing will be practice, which will be important. And then you'll do the final one. Um, just keep all your practice sheets together and um, we'll decide what to do with those later. You're just going to kind of keep those in a, in a bundle together. Okay. Have a great day, you guys. This is going to be it's going to be good. We're going to work this out together. And remember, I'm always here for you. I hope you have a great day and know I'm praying for you.